Hey, what's going on guys? Splitsball Champ is back with a new video here on the U to the Tube. So, just finished uh, watching the entire first round of the 2021 NFL Draft. Uh, of course, I did a live stream re reaction of that um, with my dad and my, my brother. So, I just wanted to take my time to uh, give my overall thoughts on our first round pick. We ended up getting cornerback J.C. Horn out of South Carolina. So um, let's look at what the analysis says on J.C. Horn, which we got with the number eight pick. Um, Pre-draft analysis. This is off um, ESPN.com. Horn was frequently asked to cover the opponent's best receiver, and he's versatile enough to play on the inside or the outside. He's big with the speed, toughness, and length to quickly develop into an above-average press corner. Horn picked off just two passes in college, but he tracks the ball well, is competitive in 50-50 situations, and flashes good ball skills. The post-draft analysis. The Panthers needed a shutdown corner after finishing with a franchise-worst seven interceptions allowing the highest completion percentage on throws outside the numbers, which is 71%, and allowing the highest average target separation, 3.71 yards, in the NFL last season, according to NFL Next Gen Stats. Horn can start opposite Dante Jackson from day one. 6'1", 205 pounds. Had a position rank of 2 Overall rank of 14, a grade of, a grade of 91. Okay. Now, I know I was on the uh, Carolina Panthers Facebook page, um, and just from what I hear, a lot of folks don't like this pick at number eight. A lot of folks do not like the J.C. Horn pick. Uh... I'll just give my overall thoughts. Uh, like I said, um, I was really hopeful for Panay Sewell, especially considering the Panthers were one pick, one pick away from landing Panay Sewell, which thought he could have gone to the Bengals, but Jamar Chase went to the Bengals. The Lions, who were before us, ended up getting Panay Sewell. And we ended up go going with J.C. Horn. A lot of folks feel like J.C. Horn would have been available if we had traded back and got him. Um, that could be possible. I mean, Patrick Sertan II went and was picked up right after us by Denver. So, I mean, it's possible that we probably could have gotten him lower. I mean, after all, Caleb Farley was picked up at number 22 by the Tennessee Titans. Um, so I do understand where people are coming from as far as maybe we could have gotten J.C. Horn still, even if we traded back and, you know, potentially got more picks. Um, there are some... That felt like he would have been available in the second round, which I highly doubt. I highly doubt J.C. Horn would have been available in the second round. I'm just going to be honest with you. So, you know, that's that I highly, highly doubt. Um, but like I said, I do understand how some fe people feel about this pick. And like I said, I wanted a left tackle in the first round or a cornerback, and we were this close to getting Panay Sewell. And, you know, the Chargers ended up getting Rashawn Slater. And um, the Vikings, I believe, ended up getting uh, Christian Derisol. Um. So here's the thing. We have to keep in mind that Cornerback was a need for Carolina. Because honestly, we really haven't had a shutdown cornerback in a while. I think James Bradbury was the closest. 
Dante Jackson, not quite there. But we have to keep this in mind. The NFC South is loaded with weapons. I mean, you look at Atlanta, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and they drafted Kyle Pitts. You know, uh, Cord Cordell Patterson, who can also be used in the return game. Um, but yeah, they got they got weapons that we got to defend against. I mean, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, shoot, wide receivers and, and tight end. They got O.J. Howard. They got um, Chris Godwin. They got Ant Antonio Brown re-signed another one-year deal. They got uh, Mike Evans. I mean, that's a lot of weapons. They, they still got Gronk. I think Gronk re-signed as well. They still got Gronkowski. Um, and then you look at the Saints, you know, you look at their weapons, what, Michael, Michael Thomas, they still got Michael Thomas, um, got, uh, let's see, who else do they have? I mean, main, I mean, the main one that sticks out is Michael Thomas. So I don't know if they're going to get any more um, weapons in the even through the draft. But I mean, NFC South is loaded with weapons. I mean, what sticks out, Buccaneers and the Falcons. So realistically, we need secondary to compete against these weapons. Because both Tampa Bay and Atlanta have a, have a whole ton of them. So, honestly, this isn't a bad pick. J.C. Horn, it's not a bad pick. He, he's, he's not a bad pick. And he was high up on the list of cornerbacks. Because you had him, you had Patrick Sertan, you had Caleb Farley, which Caleb Farley is coming off a of back surgery. And, you know, you had Greg Newsom the second, but, I mean... J.C. Horn was still pretty high up there on the list and was a need. And then you have to also look at it like this. Now look at the Carolina secondary. Dante Jackson. Remember, we picked up A.J. Bouye. And we drafted, now we drafted J.C. Horn. Uh, who else we got? Rashawn Melvin, I believe. You know, we got him at free agency. So, I mean, and then Jeremy Chen, hopefully, will get him back at uh, at safety. You know, we still have Justin Burris, which I don't know if we'll, um, if we'll hold on to him or not. But, I mean, we still have a pretty decent secondary that could potentially compete against these weapons which is a need otherwise they're going to have a field day in the passing game against Carolina's defense especially Atlanta and Tampa Bay you know remember Tampa Bay destroyed us in both games last season double digit victories over us and I know that we split with Atlanta but still Atlanta still has a very well powered offense and now adding a, a, a Kyle Pitts? Yeah. Secondary, yeah. you know, Carolina still made a good pick in that first round with J.C. Horn. And looking at what's been said about him, yeah, he might not have a whole buttload of interceptions, but the dude is coming in to start opposite Dante Jackson, which he looks like he has the credentials to do. Even Kyle Pitts said himself, toughest defender that he's went up against in college was J.C. Horn. So, like, I know a lot of people don't like this pick. Like I said, I wanted Panay Sewell. I was reaching for him. It didn't happen. We ended up going cornerback with J.C. Horn, who was up there. 
I mean, is it a fair argument that we could have traded down and still gotten him uh, with maybe the, the 15th pick or whatnot in this round? Potentially. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but there's no way he would have been available in the second round. I'm not going to believe that. There's no way he would have been available in the second round. So, I mean... I know a lot of people don't like the pick. I get it. And I know a lot of people wanted Justin Fields, considering, you know, we had the chance to get Justin Fields. But it's it's looking like we're strongly going with Sam Darnold, which, like I said, y'all got to remember who we gave up, what we gave up for Sam Darnold. And then we traded away Teddy Bridgewater. Sam Darnold's the quarterback. Whether y'all like it or not, Sam Darnold's the quarterback. And we're just going to have to deal with it. I'm not saying that we might not, that we may or may not get a quarterback in the later rounds. You know, maybe a Kyle Trash, Kellen Munn. That's still a possibility. But Sam Darnold's the quarterback. And we're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to accept it. We're going to have to give him protection. And go from there. But I'm okay with this pick. J.C. Horn, I'm okay with this pick. I'm cool with this pick. I accept this pick. Because it addresses a piece of the secondary. Because we don't have a shut down corner. And now we potentially may have that in a J.C. Horn. And we can develop him and build him up. Especially with him sharing the field with Dante Jackson, A.J. Bouye, Jeremy Chin, Rashawn Melvin. I mean, we could, we could do something with the secondary. We could do something with the secondary. So, I know how some of y'all feel, but honestly, I like this pick. I'm okay with this pick. I really am. I'm okay with this pick. Now, as far as the second round, uh, just to talk a little bit about the second round, I'm really hoping in the second round. So we have the we have the 39th pick, which is not you know number seven in the second round. Pick number 39 in, in the second round. I'm really, really hoping that we go ahead and get Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State in the second round. Six foot six, 317 pounds. I think we need to get him. I think we need to get him. I'm hoping Carolina goes, goes ahead and gets him. And then just continue to build from there. I mean, hopefully, maybe, maybe hopefully in the third, maybe Shy Smith, we can get in the third round. Um, and then there's also safety. I mean, still nobody's gotten Trayvon Morag. You know, maybe Richie Grant we could possibly get later. But I think second round, we need to go offensive tackle, and I think, if Tevin Jenkins is available, we, we got to get him. We got to get him. Um, I don't know if Liam Eckenberg out of Notre Dame. But um, word is he's he's good at pass blocking. That's his specialty. But I'm really thinking. And then even Sam, Samuel Cosme was mentioned. So maybe Samuel Cosme out of Texas might be a good pick. But um, he seems to be good at pass protection and also drives the defensive lineman off the ball in the run game. So maybe Samuel Cosme we can go for, 6'6", 314 pounds. I mean, I would like to get, I would like to get Tevin Jenkins personally, but 
I really think second round we need we need to go offensive tackle. But but yeah, um and then of course the other big story is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wants out of out of Green Bay. He's unhappy. He wants out of Green Bay. We'll have to see what happens with that. I mean, the, the dude is 37. He's up there in age, but he probably still has some a few years left in the tank, for sure. So, I have to see what happens with him. And it was also made official that Carolina did pick up the fifth-year option on DJ Moore. So, that's good to hear. Still no word on if they're going to pick up the option, the fifth-year option of Sam Darnold. I'm thinking they probably are going to, but just going to wait until after the draft. But um, I think they are going to pick up Sam Darnold's option. I really do. But, but yeah, that's all that I have. Uh, what do y'all think? What do y'all guys think? Uh, Panther fans, J.C. Horn. Cornerback out of South Carolina in the first round for Carolina. Do y'all like the pick? Do y'all hate the pick? Tell me why you like the pick. Tell me why you hate the pick. What would you have done different? Um, thoughts, comments, leave them. And uh, click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. Um, I will see y'all soon. Hope everybody has a blessed evening and a blessed day tomorrow. Take care. Peace.